Let's get salty! Everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video, and we are just one day away from the official launch of Wiz Bang's workshop. And what better way to celebrate than go over the data mine decks? Every deck that Wizbang will have the legendary card over there, all 11 of them that will go live tomorrow. And we know card for card what each deck will contain. We'll take a look if they're all terrible. Are they good? Can you hit legend with them? Uh, probably not, but we'll talk about all of those. And big thank you to Imic who data mined all of this stuff and posted it on Twitter. And a reminder that we have our giveaway going on for three rewards tracks out of my pocket. To enter that giveaway, like and comment in the video, linked in the description below, the one with that thumbnail over there. Be subscribed to the channel. So let's take a look at the deck, starting off with the rainbow deck from Death Knight. And uh, you can see it's one of the decks that actually has a lot of different classes involved in their cards. You have Warriors Bash, you've got two Thrive in the Shadows, two Hellfires. But yeah, overall you can see here, um, it's very spell-based and your payoffs are summoning a bunch of minions with your rainbow style decks or cards. So yeah, like Chaos Strike is your fell card. You've got Dry Scale Deputy in here to like get you some extra value. Hipster, which could just find spells that didn't start, I believe in your opponent's deck from your opponent's class. Um, Celestial Shot is like an arcane spell in there. Um, you've got Consecration, which is holy. Uh, you got Frost Spell with a Remorseless Winter, Nature Spell, Wild Growth. And yeah, you could draw with like multicasters here. Basically, a multicaster draw card for each different spell school you've cast this game. I believe this is just a warrior, uh, a, not a warrior card, uh, but a wild card at the moment, right? So uh, you could break a bit of the rules right now with that. Same with like wild growth. Wild growth is a wild card. Um, another one is Coral Keeper. This was a shaman card. Summon a 3 3 elemental for each spell school you've cast this game. So you get a bit of board presence and elemental inspiration, part of Rainbow Mage. That does something pretty similar except you get a four five vortex with a bonus effect the deck doesn't seem incredibly strong i've uh, got one new card in here in clear its promoter from Wizbang's workshop that gives you some mana cheat but it's gonna be hard to kill your opponents you don't really fight much for board you don't have much minion generation other than your coral uh, keeper and elemental inspiration i'm uh, not super competitive should be fun though and it's cool to be able to you know break the class rules as well as standard and wild rules all in one deck, but overall, probably not a deck you're gonna win a lot with. The next deck we have here is the Demon Hunter deck. It's all around the three wishes you get. You'll have three wishes that are in your, your, in your deck that allow you to wish for the perfect card. I believe they use the same logic as Zeph, where you basically get that perfect card from classic and basic. So you have eight mana, maybe you get Lord Draxus or Tyrion, something like that. Or two mana, get a Wild Growth, five mana, get a Brawl. Um, but overall, it looks like it follows. Basically, it's like a big demon deck for the most part. It looks relatively okay. You have Illidari Studies. You have Red Card, which is eh, a little spotty, but Chaos Strike, the Two Spirit of the Totems, Eldraki Warblades, Eye Beam. You get two Umpire's Grasp, which says Death Rattle, draw a demon and reduce its cost by two, which can be really good. You get one copy of Ball Hog, one copy of CCG. Well, you can't really have two, although the Hunter deck, maybe. Um, you get those demons on our cards raging fell screamer to cheat out your demons workshop mishap another mishap mishap my goodness another new card with some aoe chaos nova you got the window shopper you can get double illidari and then mctheridon which you can red card and keep having uh some aoe this is actually looks like one of the better decks one you could certainly win with any deck that is illidari inquisitor i'm sorry has a chance to beat a deck because that goes face for a lot of damage especially when you cut like copy with umpire's grab and then maybe even red card it so once it you know on your turn it comes back you can hit base again right so uh one of the more solid decks and you got the wishes too which could be really good so uh you play this deck i think you actually have a pretty decent shot at winning some games next we have the druid deck which uh, if you saw our showcase a few days back not the best although you can't get a hearthstone brew but yes you get um the zero mana spells, I think, how much is it? You get th uh, four, eight, 10, you get 20 of the moment of discoveries in your deck, which is you discover either a druid spell, a druid minion, or a neutral minion you can afford to play. So the idea is you wanna ramp up and then get better options. I've seen some people just on zero, 
make it so you have zero mana and then just spam penguins, right? Spam snow flipper penguins to try and aggro your opponent out. You also get 10 ramp cards in here. So these are these are wild only cards, almost all of them. Invigorate, uh, two wild growths, two overgrowths, two nourishes. The only one that is technically standard is crystal cluster, which could be more presence later in the game. But overall, yeah, you get a lot of discover. It's usually not great because there's no class bonus since neutrals are in the pool. It would almost be better if it wasn't. Um, but yeah, playing it didn't feel great, but it can scam, especially if you ramp it into something nutty really quickly. That could actually do some work. Next, we have the Hunter deck, the legendary Hunter deck. This one's pretty cool. I don't know if it can really win, but Astalor stays in standard. You have two copies of each of these legendaries. So you get two Astalors, two Flints, two Asimovs, which was recently buffed to three mana where whenever an enemy not just everyone whenever an enemy takes um a damage you destroy it enemy minion not the hero that'd be pretty nuts uh dread scale now only hits um enemies period and it does go face you get two zigzors you get two emperors which i found very helpful if you get that early two okami so a lot of wild cards in here two Ziliaxes, two Muklas. You could go Lorthamar into Lorthamar, um, Beast La Master Lo Lirox, which can be really good if you have two King Crushes or King Plush in your hand. That could be really good. Two Stranglethorn Hearts, two King Crushes, two King Plushes, and Sunwell. So yeah, Lorthamar to King Plush. Again, if you saw our showcase, really good get that guy buffed up and um it's gonna really struggle where you have like barely any early game you fall behind it's hard to catch up but kind of breaks deck building rules which is really cool you get a bunch of legendaries and you can get king crush and king plush in the same standard deck technically so again pretty cool has a shot to win but definitely will be a bit more of a struggle Wizbag mage is literally just 30 copies of this one card, the morphing card. Each turn, this is into your hand, transform it into a random playable mage or neutral card. You're really at the mercy of purely random. It is always playable, so you got that going for you. But overall, I feel like these decks are pretty hard to win with, and I imagine this one will be a bit of a struggle with, but yeah, that, that's the review. You get a lot of random and it obeys, you know, standard rules. So it's only standard cards. Can't find a Titan. Um, and that's basically it. So, and it can't be another class. It has to be mage or neutral. So uh, good luck with that one. So we have the heroic Paladin deck, which is really a cool deck. Certainly can win. This deck curves out. You've got your one drops, two drops. It's a Highlander style deck. So it only has one copy of each card. So you have Beaming Sidekick, Righteous Protector, Selfless Hero, Sir Finley Sea Guide, Archer Protector. You got Crystal Mist Kangor, Quality Flashlight, Hand of a Doll, Potion of Heroism. You got Finley in here. So you got like two Finleys. I believe there's two each of the League of Explorers. Aldor Peacekeeper. You get Brands back in standard. Bronze Explorer, Consecration, Primordial Explorer. Azure Explorer, unfortunately, this Elise. This Elise is terrible. It's too bad it's not the Elise that gave you an Angoro pack. That would have been way better. It shuffles the map, and then when you get the map, you shuffle the monkey, and then you get the monkey, you get a bunch of legendaries. It's so slow. Uh, True Silver, the other Druid Elise, which copies your hand, which can be pretty good. Protect the Innocent, Solemn Vigil, Emerald Explorer, two Renos. Reno the Relic. Actually, sorry, it's three League of Explorers, I think. Three, isn't it? Anyways, you get three Renos. Uh, th two Reno, you get the regular Reno that heals. The Mage Reno that board clears, Dino Tamer Brand, Rag Lord, R Light Lord, Tyrion Forge Ring, um, Dragon Queen Alex, and unfortunately, like, uh, come on, man, no Reno Lone Ranger, but you do get the amazing Reno for Mage, which poofs, but does not remove dormants or locations. So not nearly as good as Reno Lone Ranger. So I guess it's three Renos and two of the other League Explorers, unless I'm just missing something. I'm probably missing something, but overall, really cool deck. It has a shot to win. It's got the Highlander card payoffs. Although you don't have Zeph, you do not have uh, Reno Lone Ranger, which hurts a lot. It still has some pretty good potential and is definitely one of the more fun decks out there. Whizbang Priest is all about the automatons. Um, like is it the septuple or something, uh, you get seven astral automatons. So those are in your deck. It breaks the deck building rules that way. And then you have two clergies, two fan clubs, two holy smites, one psychic conjurer, two celestial projectionists, one death, 
two pains, uh, two thrive of the shadows, two holy novas, one love everlasting. You get Pip, Zola, and two shadow reflections and two light bombs. So you can make a lot of astral automatons with this deck, and you already start off with seven. So you could have like an opening hand of like four astro astral automatons, which could be really hard for a lot of decks to to beat the second absolutely win games it can i think it needs to win probably quick but you can also overwhelm of course you have a handful of these early with a pip that can be absolutely ridiculous too so uh the priest deck is definitely one of the best ones out there rogue gets this pirate style deck that also has duels treasures um i believe the duels treasures are spawned at random i don't have the pool of what they could be but the other cards are out there. So you have two shadow steps, two break dances, two deadly poisons, two digs for treasures. Unfortunately, two big tapes because they're not very good. Uh, two swash burglars, one fog sail freebooter, two catchamite creations, uh, two quick picks, two hench clan burglars. You get the new legendary Sonia, two water cannons, two sandbox scoundrels, and then shop lifter goldbeard. You don't get the draw engine uh, with the uh, with the toy, the whatever the the two meta, the new two meta card that uh, draws a card when you summon a pirate. You don't get that, which is a pretty big deal, but you do get duels treasures, which can vary from a bunch of different things. And uh, we'll have to see how those play out. But again, it's a it's a deck that can curve out and you can random some really good stuff, get value with Sonya or just a lot. Um, you don't get Valera's gift, unfortunately, to like buff up your weapon, but you can get multiple deadly poisons and item uh, other cards like that. So one of the better ones, I think. I don't know how competitive it'll be, but certainly has a shot. And then again, you never know with those duels. Treasures. Uh, the Shaman deck is unplayable garbage. This deck is terrible. You get Quest Accepted, which gives you the three quests, the Old Doom one, the uh, Angoro one, and what, United Stormwood one. You can complete them, I guess, but you don't really have a way to utilize their payoffs. Like, double spells. What am I going to do? Double Command the Neptulon? Neat. Uh, double Battle Cries? I guess more damage with my Chieftain? And then the like just these more burlocks in my hand, which your hand is usually kind of full or it the stack's terrible. I will be shocked if people win like a lot of games with it. It's gonna be pretty rough to win games with this. Uh having three quests just doesn't make a lot of sense. It just doesn't, but maybe you can win with this an early Murloc curve and hope to like get something good, which is pretty darn hard. So uh yeah, you can see the cards here. A lot of wild cards like Sludge Slurper, Spawn uh Spawn Pool Forger. You can go like infinite value with underbelly angler and get some clownfish discounts uh scargill and ne neptulon is so bad it's so bad but you get that card as well it's gonna be a rough one and then we also have the whiz bang warlock deck which is a bit of a smaller deck because you want to get through it you want to get through your deck and get quicker to cards like Nero Fireblade, which lets you summon a, a portal full of imps or get Elysiana to refill your deck or get your Phenotum out very quickly or cheat out a Baron Scavenger or fill the board with Chef Nomi and her Grease Fire Elemental. So it's a 20 card deck. You try and rip through it. You can like delete your cards with uh, what Chaos Creation. You can delete them with Waste Remover and then get to yeah, Nero. I got Rin to mill your opponent. I don't know how good this deck will be but it is certainly kind of more of all the interesting line of decks out there and then the last one is the warrior deck which is pretty pretty awful it's got boob scheme i mean it's got boob scheme in it but it's got like all the lackey the evil cards from rise of shadows so you got the schemes you got the sinister deal all the lackey cards pretty much in there uh whether it's rogue warrior priest shaman got live wire lance in there two of them you even got reform as a legendary tog woggle which could get you like more stuff mana cheat legendaries uh lazul and then you do get a hero card dr boom mad genius you get dr boom himself and Hag Swamp Queen Hagatha and Arch Thief Farm, which is terrible. So overall, the decks, some are pretty bad. Some are okay. Some have a shot at winning, but it'll be a hell of a challenge to try and take the new Wizbag to Legend. But maybe, just maybe, someone could get that lucky. 
I really doubt it, but it looks like a lot of fun. And I think if you're looking for a lot of variety in one card, you cannot go wrong with a Splendiferous Whizbang. I, I think these decks look pretty sweet. They look pretty fun and maybe they'll update it so you can get the copy of your opponent's deck at some time. So let me know what you guys think about these decks. I'll link Imix Tweet that has all these images down below if you want to take a closer look. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends.